Well, good evening. Welcome to the September edition of Sky Views, brought to you by the New Jersey State Museum Planetarium. I'm Bill Murray, Planetarium Technician at the Planetarium. Let's take a look at some interesting sights in our September skies this year. We're currently looking towards the southeast at about 8.50 p.m. on the evening of Friday, September 9th. Uh, 8.50 is the end of astronomical twilight, when the last bit of twilight has faded from our evening skies. But as we can see in our planetarium view here, even though the sunlight has faded from the skies, the skies will still be brightly lit because tonight is the night of the full moon. The full moon in September is traditionally called the harvest moon. Uh, before the advent of electrical lighting, Farmers who at this time of year would be attempting to harvest their crops could use the light of the moon, uh, the full moon rises just as the sun is setting, to continue their work for several hours after sunset. Normally, the moon rises about 45 minutes later each day, but during the month of September, as is shown in our diagram here, the path of the moon's orbit makes a very shallow angle with the Earth's horizon which means during September and October as well, the moon rises only about 15 minutes later each day. And this fact allows farmers to get bright moonlight in their early evening skies to allow them to continue their harvest, thus the name of the moon. While you're out after sunset and watching the harvest moon rise, it's an excellent time to check out something called the moon illusion. Many people think when they see the full moon near the horizon that it actually appears bigger than it does when it's directly overhead. This is not the case. The moon is the same size in both situations, uh, but many people think that it's true. Also, uh, because the moon rises through the thicker part of our atmosphere at this time of year, many times it appears similar to a large orange pumpkin, another symbol of the season. In addition to the moon visible in our early September skies, we have something visible in our evening skies that we haven't seen for many months, and that is two bright planets. Over the last six months or so, all of the visible planets in our solar system have been grouped in the morning skies, uh, so they're visible to people who get up before sunrise, uh, but we haven't seen very many of them in our evening skies, but that is beginning to change now, uh, and we can see Two planets to the right of the moon is the ringed planet Saturn, and to the left of the moon is the largest planet in our solar system, Jupiter. Jupiter is a gas giant planet. That means there's no solid surface on Jupiter. It's gas all the way down to its core, and it is the largest planet in our solar system. And if you have a small telescope, probably one of the more rewarding objects to look at in the nighttime sky. Jupiter shows enormous amount of detail on its surface in the uh, atmospheric bands that ring the planet, and at times you can even see probably the most famous feature in Jupiter's atmosphere shown here in this image, which is the Great Red Spot, a gigantic hurricane-like storm uh, that has existed for more than 400 years and is actually larger than our entire planet, the Earth. Also visible in a small telescope when looking at Jupiter are the four moons that were discovered by the Italian astronomer Galileo early in the 17th century. Galileo was the first person to use a telescope for astronomy. He didn't invent the telescope, but he was the first to turn it to the nighttime skies. And one of the first discoveries that he made when he looked at the planet Jupiter was that it was surrounded by what appeared to be four small stars. But as he watched Jupiter over the coming weeks and months, he noticed that these stars were changing their position. They remained close to Jupiter, but not in the same location. And he came to realize that these were actually moons that were orbiting Jupiter. He originally called these moons the Medicean stars, after the House of Medici in Italy, um, who were his patrons at the time. Uh, we now know them as 
the moons that Galileo discovered or the Galilean moons, uh, Ganymede, Io, Europa, and Callista, named after all people who were love interests of the god Jupiter in Roman mythology. You can repeat Galileo's observation for yourself if you have a small telescope, uh, observing the moons as they change position around Jupiter from night to night. Jupiter actually has more than 60 moons orbiting around it, uh, but the four moons discovered by Galileo are the only ones that are visible in small telescopes. Saturn, the second largest planet in our solar system, is also a gas giant planet. Um, but probably Saturn is most famous for its bright system of rings. The rings of Saturn are made up of trillions of particles of ice and rock and dust, part of a moon that tried to form a little bit too close to Saturn long ago, and Saturn's gravity actually pulled that moon apart. And all the material that would have gone into making up that moon got spread out into the rings instead. Although Saturn's atmosphere doesn't show a lot of detail in small telescopes, its rings do. Uh, probably the most visible feature in the rings is shown here in our image, and that is the gap between the A and B rings known as the Cassini division, after the Italian astronomer Giovanni Cassini, who discovered it with one of the early telescopes back in the 17th century. Both Saturn and Jupiter will be rising much higher and become more visible as the fall progresses. And in a month or so, they'll be joined by a third bright planet, the planet Mars, which is headed towards its opposition when it will be at its closest to the Earth in early December. Well, at this time of year, as we're transitioning from summer into fall, uh, can see the constellations of both, both seasons visible in our graphic here. Uh, above us, we can see the summer triangle, which is almost directly overhead with the constellation of Aquila the Eagle. And below, closer to the horizon, we can see the fall constellations of Pegasus the Flying Horse and Aquarius the Water Bearer. But in the border between those two are two small constellations right on the border between fall and summer. And although uh, many people don't know them, they're fairly easily recognizable, even with all the light pollution that we have here in New Jersey. And those two constellations are Equiuleus, the little horse, and Delphinus, the dolphin. The constellation of Equiuleus, the little horse, is the second smallest constellation in the nighttime sky. It's easily located uh, right next to and just a little bit to the west of the head of its big brother, Pegasus the Flying Horse. And even though the constellation is very old, uh, many people think it's more than 2,000 years old, uh, it has no mythology associated with it, which is kind of unusual for constellations that have been around that long. The brightest star in the constellation is the fourth magnitude star, Kit Alpha, and there are very few other stars in the constellation. Uh, if the moon is not visible in the sky, it's relatively easy to pick out uh, and much easier if you have a small pair of binoculars. The constellation of Delphinus, the dolphin, is much more easily recognizable. Delphinus is also an ancient constellation, uh, but it does have some mythology associated with it. It's said that back in ancient times, the Greek poet and musician Arion was traveling from Sicily back to Greece uh, when the crew of the ship that he was on decided to uh, murder him for his money. And uh, asking one last request before they did that, he asked to play a song and his song actually summoned a pod of dolphins near the ship, and he jumped overboard and was able to ride on the back of one of the dolphins uh, to shore, and thus saving his life. And the constellation of Delphinus represents the dolphin that he rode. The constellation is easily recognizable by a small asterism in the shape of a parallelogram of four stars, which has the rather odd name of Job's Coffin. Uh, no one actually knows the origin of that name. 
and has several interesting stars in it. So first, two of the brighter stars in the parallelogram are called Swallowson and Rotnev, some unusual names for stars, and actually represent the name of a known person. If you spell Swallowson backwards, it becomes Nicholas, and Rotnev backwards is Venator, so you get Nicholas Venator, uh, which is the Latinized version of the name of Niccolo Cacciatore, who was the assistant of the Italian astronomer Giovanni Piazzi. The story goes that Piazzi was very pleased with uh, the work that his assistant, Niccolo Cacciatore, was doing, and so secretly he decided to name two stars that didn't have names already in the constellation of Delphinus after him. Uh, however, he couldn't uh, put the name directly in as Nicholas Venator, so he spelled it backwards and gave the names of the stars, and the names have stuck. Also in the constellation of Delphinus is one of the more interesting and uh, easily visible double stars in the sky, represented by the dolphin's nose, the star Gamma Delphini. Even a small telescope will reveal Gamma Delphini as a pair of fourth and fifth magnitude yellow stars separated by 10 arc seconds, uh, but that still makes it one of the more interesting and easily visible double stars in the night sky. Well, that's it for our September skies here at the Planetarium of the New Jersey State Museum. Come back next month for a look at some more of the constellations of autumn. Until then, from all of us here, clear skies.